and here we are again with another Communications Power Incorporated piece. Uh, this is a frequency counter, but uh, much more, because this is the BC2000 base console. So, uh, like the high-end frequency counter, there were two, two different versions. Actually, they had a bunch of different versions of the boards, but there were two major differences. You had one that had... Uh, was just a frequency counter, and then they had uh, one that also had a built-in clock. So this, of course, being the the highest end piece, was had uh, frequency or time. Um, this also has built-in antenna tuner, antenna switching, um, receive preamp. So yeah, it's got all kinds of other neat little features to it. Now the board up here pretty much is the same as the rest. So you can see this looks basically like the the other uh, frequency counters, but this does have the uh, clock circuit. So there are a few extra ICs. Um, now some of the uh, frequency counters, the FC70s, uh, those boards had gone through a few different variations. Of and what they ended up doing eventually was, was I guess to cut down on cost and having to produce a bunch of different uh, boards. They just went basically using one board for everything. So you'll occasionally you'll take an FC70 apart, and it has this board right here. And there's a socket, but there's no IC in here. And you'll also notice, now of course this is a different, completely different thing, because this is the base console. But occasionally, you know, if, like I say, if you look at those FC70s, there'll be a hole in the back, but there's nothing installed in it. That's because that's for, you know, some of the clock switches. Like, you know, you have on the back of this for setting your 12, 24 hour, the set, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, this is a nice, nice little unit. It's in fairly good condition uh, physically, but it does have its problems. It does not work. <clears throat> and it's fairly easy to see why we're having some problems. Some of the magic smoke has been let out of this. So... Just right off the bat, when I pulled the cover, I could see this resistor is completely cooked. As a matter of fact, I you, know, you can see I can chip the. This one's cooked. This one's cooked. So yeah, we've had some some of the uh, nasty electric smoke has been let out of the <laughs> out of the box. So we're gonna have to put some electric smoke back in. So yeah, I turned it on. the The actual counter did come on, displayed all zeros for a second, and then it went and then it went blank. Uh, went completely dead. So I'll have to. We'll get uh, these resistors changed. I need to see exactly what they're for. I think actually some of these are for a few of these transistors, which control some of these digits. So I'll I'll need to see exactly what the heck's going on here. But uh, otherwise, it looks fairly good condition. Um, it does look to have been taken apart before. I don't know if someone just worked on this trying to fix it maybe and gave up, but I can see you know, pretty much a lot of this stuff has been unsoldered and put back together. So someone has had it apart. And then here's the other side, because you have to remember this is also an antenna tuner and antenna switches. So it had, you, know, for, uh, you can hook up two different antennas to this, so it has relays. And you can see the uh, little cover. Yeah, I can't get that one popped off, but the cover is missing off of this relay. It's not really a big deal that the cover's missing because this is completely enclosed. Um, it doesn't have any air vents in it. So once you put the covers on this, there's really no way dirt's going to get in here. So it's not going to hurt it not having that plastic cover on there. As long as the relays are fine, there's no reason to you know go changing that just so it has the cover. But uh, I can see again this has been out. Actually, it looks like this diode here has probably been replaced because both sides have been resoldered. Um... Like I say, this has had a little bit of work done to it. Um, doesn't look like it was, you know, it wasn't soldered exactly properly, but I've seen a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> I'll put it that way. So, you know, I can see all of the, a lot of this was unsoldered. Yeah, pretty much everything along the back side here. So, yeah, somebody's had this board out before. So, and once again, yeah, it's a CPI. So, it, you know, the only advantage here is, um, in this, thank God, because remember, if you've watched the previous two videos, how I talk about CPI and their, their captured screws. <laughs> you know, here's the faceplate. That's a decal with glue on the back of it that's stuck to the sheet metal. Well, what's behind the, that decal? The screws. 
<laughs> that screw into these switches. So if these switches ever break, yeah, you're kind of screwed because you can't get to the screws. So luckily on the back side here, though, um, there's no decal on the back, so we can get to, of course, you can see all the screw heads there. So it's easy enough just to pop those screws out, push the power connector in, um, you know, disconnect the the RCA jack here, the sample port, and just uh, unsolder the uh, wires off of the AC jack. And then you can get the board, you know, up and back just enough to get in there and do what you need to do, um, and then put it back in. So the first thing I'll probably do is, is um, I'm going to change the electrolytic capacitors, but probably the first thing I'll do is change these burned up resistors, um, slowly bring it up on a variac, and what I want to monitor is to see if there's a short somewhere. Is there IC, transistor, is there something shorted out? Because uh, this many resistors don't just go up in smoke for no reason whatsoever. There's something wrong, obviously, in the display circuitry, because that's what all of, all of this circuitry up here basically is for. Most all of this is um, comes up and then feeds feeds the actual here, move it back a little bit, feeds the display here, so we definitely have a problem there. But uh, we'll get her knocked out and uh, get this guy back up and running. So let me uh, get this torn apart a little bit and see what we find. And we can see we now have a display. And the uh, frequency counter does work somewhat. <laughs> it still has some problems, so I have to take it back apart again. Um, but it does work. It's new, we're close to accurate now because of the problem, which I'll show you in a second. So it's hooked up to a radio, and the output of this runs over the uh, BK1040. So if I put the radio on channel 19, that should be should show up 27.185 over here. So, yeah, you can see it's way off. Um, but it works. The way off part doesn't bother me what whatsoever. Once I finally figured out what it was, <laughs> um, I knew it was an oscillator circuit problem. Um, but the oscillator circuit does work. So let me just turn everything off here, and I can show you what I have done to this thing. So for starters, remember I had said some of the uh, smoke had been let out of this. So you'll notice there's a bunch of new resistors in here. As a matter of fact, let me grab all of the old ones here palm of my hand. So here's all the old ones and yeah you can see there's definitely some crispy critters here and they're all the exact same value. It's the same resistor that goes on uh, a line of seven different transistors for the seven different digits. Um, I get the feeling this thing was turned on and just left on forever. Um, these resistors, they're right here, they've been also have been increased in size. I've increased them from a quarter watt to a half watt. So you can see there's a bunch of new, bigger ones in here that are twice as big as all the other surrounding ones. Um, when this thing's turned on, uh, those do get hot. And, you know, not, I wouldn't say excessively hot, but obviously so. But then again, like I say, I think this was left on because this has a clock in it. So I think someone might have used this actually as a digital clock. <laughs> So, yeah, all those resistors, you know, Lord knows how much time they had on them. And they just, you know, and, and these things are heat generators to start with. So, you know, on top of that, uh, it, it really ended up cooking them. So those were replaced. Um, and as you can see, the display works fine. Now, the oscillator circuit problem, I had originally thought it was the crystal. Because um, it didn't work at first. And then it would work. And then it wouldn't. And I knew it wasn't a programmable divider circuit or anything, because that's, yeah, that starts, you know, here's your oscillator circuit right here, and it runs out, you've got the, the divider circuit, so it's divide by 16, divide by 16, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. So, you know, you start out with 12.8 megahertz input here, and by the time you get over here, it's been knocked down to 10 hertz, or to 5 hertz, excuse me. Um... And the problem was over here, and I would tap on the crystal, and if I had an oscilloscope hooked up in this circuit, I could see the waveform increase, and it would it would stop oscillating, and then it would start, but it would be at half the signal strength, and then it would increase again. It was just jumping all over the place, and I really thought it was that crystal, and then I started doing a little bit more digging and found out it's actually this capacitor right here is bad, this trimmer capacitor. Now, this isn't your standard trimmer capacitor. Um, this is actually, and I don't really want to call it air variable capacitor because it actually has, and that's the problem, that's what's missing, 
are the mica wafers. This actually has, uh, it's just like the, you know, if you remember the underside, what these look like, okay? Those are big air variable capacitors. They look just, it looks just like that, just in miniature. So it has three plates along the back side. If I can get in here without getting in the camera's view. I'm trying to do this around a camera. There, so you can see some green down there now. That's because I've swung the plate and now I'm in the light. But you can see that it's actually an air, it's a variable, a, you know, like an air variable capacitor. There's two plates on the back that don't move and then the three plates that are attached to this. But there's supposed to be a little thin mica wafer or disc in between every single one of those plates because it's so small so they don't touch. And that's the problem. Here is what one should look like. I don't know if the camera would even be able to focus on it. You could probably just make it out. There's some really, really thin mica wafers in here. You can just barely see them. Like I say, they're really, really thin. But that's the problem. And I've seen that before in the, uh, the CPI equipment. Um... If you turn one of these and you see those wafers rip and start, and that's the problem is they're they're so close together, those mica wafers actually do contact and they're rubbing on those discs. And I think the edge of the you know edge of one of these plates catches and it starts to rip it in half. Now you can save it if you ever try to calibrate one of these and you see the disc, the little wafer starting to shoot out the side. Stop! Don't turn it anymore. Push that little wafer back in. Save yourself some headache of having to track one down and then having to completely dismantle your unit so, you know, you can replace it. As long as you can just keep pushing it in and keep it in there, it doesn't really matter. Once you get it adjusted, the friction's going to hold it in there. The problem is, while you're rotating it, once it's ripped, it's got a way of coming out. So, like I say, if you can you ever see that happening, because I know I have personally, I'll be adjusting one of these, and you'll see a piece of disc starting to shove, you know, come out the side. Just try and gently push it back in, make your adjustment, you know, but uh, yeah, that's the problem. So, you know, like right now, it's probably at a dead short. As a matter of fact, if I turn it on, let's see. Oh, no, oh, the counters. Because you'll see when I... See that? How it starts to flip out. And actually, if I key, turn the radio back on, key the microphone. Actually, turn the mic gain down. And you'll see it should change while I'm turning it and it's not the slightest because these things are actually supposed to be very sensitive I mean it actually makes it a pain in the ass but the slightest bit of movement man these things are usually jump you know several hundred Hertz you can see I'm turning it's not doing anything and there, you can see it when the plates actually short out you can see digits start to disappear other ones get bright as you know digits go out all of the power, you know, all of the power, because they're not lit anymore, there's a, you know, big bunch of power available, and the other digits get bright, so, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty much toast. So, I have to tear it apart again. <laughs> but at least I know what it is. And, fortunately, this isn't an FC70, you know, 76, you know, counter, or counter time module. Um, this one's a little bit easier to get apart. You don't have to take anything apart in the front here, other than you know, take the, the screws out of the circuit that hold the circuit board down. But it's basically just unsolder two wires, unscrew those switches. Like I say, this still needs to be fixed because that just pops out, so no problem there. And then unsolder the 220 volt line wires right there. Actually, the wire and then the fuse. And then you can fold this board up and you can get to the underside to uh, work on it. But yep, that's the problem. Bad tremor capacitor. So otherwise, it appears to be working just fine. Um, the frequency, the offset, because this has... Um, right now, the there's a jumper in here. So the sample port, because there's no interconnection between the underside where all the RF is and the top side, which is the counter. So what they did was is they have basically the antenna tuner and preamp circuitry other than the power supply up here, um, the bottom is completely independent. 
there's no interconnection other than the power supply, basically. So, and I guess that was a good idea. You know, solid piece of plate steel. They don't want a bunch of RF energy down here leaching in to the top side, which makes sense. So, the way that you get your sample from, you know, so when you key your microphone that you actually get your sample up here to the top side of the board is, is you use a little jumper. So, it's just a piece of... Uh, RG174 coax cable with a RCA jack soldered to each end. Actually made this, uh, if I can get it pulled off the, with just a RCA jack soldered on each end. Made that up for the customer. But you'll take, there's a, the bottom port is the RF sample port and this is the counter in port. And then you just plug that in. And then if you were using this with an external radio like a uh, uh, they had that little frequency module, the frequency converter module. Um, you know, you wouldn't have this hooked up. You'd have that hooked up into this port. And then there, when you turn it on, there are... Let's see. Let me flip the switch on the back. You'll see there's two different offsets there. Which they're obviously wrong. They're off, but... You can see that there, there's the frequency offsets, and that's meant to display then the proper frequency when you're using with the when you're using one of these with that frequency converter and another radio. But uh, where in the hell switch is it? And flip it back to normal. But uh, yep, so everything seems to be working. Like I say, it's just horribly inaccurate, and that's because of that little trimmer cap. So I'll get that replaced and. Uh, get this back together and then you can see it all together and work working properly and here we go pretty much all back together now I still have the screws out of the top cover and actually I need to take these screws out of the bottom cover again <laughs> to take it off because I did forget to replace one thing and that's the light bulb because <laughs> that says antenna tuner on right there and as you can see the light does not come on i forgot to change the light bulb so no biggie just two screws in each side the bottom cover pops off but uh now if you've watched any of my uh videos on the just the frequency counters i said hey you have to let them warm up for a while because they get really hot and the frequency is going to drift you know their reading is going to change drastically over that temperature change until they get warm this is no different other than this takes a lot longer for the temperature to stabilize. Um, now there is one advantage to this, and actually this, actually this one and the frequency counter clock. Because remember they had basically three different ones. They had a frequency counter, they had a frequency counter clock, and then they had this one, which was the frequency counter clock, antenna tuner, receive preamp. So you know this did a bunch of different things. This was the top end piece, the mid mid range one. Um, but the mid-range one's kind of like this one, because once you plug it in, it's on all the time. It does not matter what position this switch is on, the power supply is still on inside, and that's what's generating most of that heat. And the reason it's actually still on inside is because it has a clock. And if it's if it completely powers down, it loses the time. So the advantage of these is once you plug them in, you know, set it on your shelf, plug it in, you set the time. As long as you leave it plugged in, it will stay warm. It's not going to be up to 100% full operating temperature because once you actually turn it on, there's a little bit more load on the system. A lot of other circuits become activated in here. It'll increase in temperature a little bit, but the, the change in frequency will be very small compared to with the just the standalone frequency counter that didn't have a clock because when it's turned off, the actual 120 volt uh, power line is actually attached to the power switch. So when you turn the FC70 off, it is completely off. There's nothing still on inside. So um, what I'll do with this one is I'll just put all the screws, like I said, I'll change the light bulb. I'll put all the screws in it, um, just set it off to the side. I'll leave it plugged in the entire day. Um, I may even just let it plugged in overnight and actually calibrate it in the morning. Um, that way I know its temperature has completely stabilized, the cover's been on it that entire time, and then when the customer gets it, he can plug it in, um, you know, plug it in, set the time, and, you know, as, when he's using it then, so when he turns it on, the frequency counter will be very close, and you know, it won't take long, like I say, once you turn it on, that little bit of additional heat that a few resistors and a few other components in here are going to make, but it'll be pretty much at its operating temperature. 
Um, now these don't get as hot as the uh, the smaller units. One of the main reasons being it's just physically bigger, so it has a lot more room to dissipate the heat that it does make. So yeah, for you coffee aficionados, this one's not a good coffee warmer <laughs> like the other ones are. But that does work, and we'll see how close it is. Because just a few minutes ago, the frequency counter was actually very accurate. I don't know if it's changed anymore. Yeah, see, it's dropped. I had it actually said it was perfect. It was just fluttering between 2.3 and 2.4. And you can see the frequencies ending 2.3, 2.4.0. So, yeah, you can see it's... Because remember, this same as the regular, just a standalone counter... This does not have the ones digit. This starts out tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on. So, you know, two one, two four. Yeah, so this has actually dropped a little bit more since I just in the amount of time me talking and whatnot. Because I had actually just just had to cover off. Thought, well, I'll get it because it started out it was at like five nine something. Um, but yep, yeah, so we'll set it off to the side. So it's a good working unit now. Um, didn't have any real major problems other than, you know, assemble it, take it apart, assemble it, take it apart. It's the only problem with the design. Anytime you, you, know, you fix one problem, you put it back together, um, turn it on to find out that, ah, crap, there's something else wrong. Take it, you know, diagnose it, take it back apart to, you know, replace that component because, you know, I recapped it, did the resistors, put it back together, turned it on just to find out that, yeah, the frequency was completely wonky, and that was because of this little guy. And it has now been replaced, and you can see... Oh, come on, I'm not going to focus on that little thing, is it? There. Ah, there. You can see how it's made up. And you can see how close those plates are. So, yeah, as soon as you start to mesh them together, they were shorting out. So, yeah, that was the problem. All those little mica wafers or discs in there had uh, vanished, basically. So, as you can see, there's a another one has been installed. If the camera comes there, we go. goes into focus. So, you can see that's now been installed. So, yep, it's ready to be put back into service for decades more and should uh, be a good working unit because it's in really good condition. I mean, you can see the top cover is really nice. It's not all beat up. Um, <laughs> probably the only thing wrong is is uh, it's missing, I guess, the CPI sticker off the top, which you can get uh, get new CPI stickers. Shoot, they get them on eBay. Uh, there's a seller on there that sells sells the Made in the USA CPI stickers. So, yeah, heck, get, get one of those, slap it on there, and this thing's about as... I'm not going to say it's in brand new condition, but uh, it's about uh, as good a condition as you're going to get for a used unit because it is really, really nice shape. So there you go. There's the now basically completed um, Communications Power Incorporated or CPI BC2000 base console.